okay so uh, we'll continue with the quantum circuit model now uh, i introduced an identity last time and i said this is equivalent to uh so where this is an orthogonal matrix rotation matrix so essentially what i mean by that is that uh, what's the consequence so essentially what it means is that let's say i have a uh, this is the action of u and u dagger and that would turn out to be or in other words this guy so you can verify it so essentially what's happening is that the action of uh, u and u dagger for a matrix is uh, the matrix that generates rotation is essentially the rotation itself the axis around which the so this structure was generating rotations about an axis m so application of u and u dagger uh, this operator being sandwiched between u and u dagger is essentially uh, a rotation about a new axis m where m would be multiplied by a rotation matrix r uh, so that essentially is the idea of uh, rotation and uh, that was yeah something which was a uh, in addition to what we did so with that we come to the circuit identities so for example uh, as we saw this guy is you can check it through simple matrix multiplication uh, in other words another circuit identity could be here h is the hadamard and that would be just your single qubit gate z so the idea is that hadamard swaps the standard basis and the x basis so and x basis is essentially this guy now so these circuit identities you can once you are comfortable with that in a circuit you can plug this directly in front uh, in place of uh, you can substitute this by this uh, that would be more clear so for example let's say so in some sense this is you can take this to be a new language and language of circuit diagrams we'll be proving some uh, things very elegantly uh, through the circuit diagram so just keep in mind that these are elegant ways to do things so for example if you look at a control not operator now that is equivalent to
the following circuit and you know the easy way to see this is of course uh, you can certainly verify that uh, the truth table of both these guys so this guy goes to 0 0 this is the truth table for this circuit this guy goes to 0 1 since the control is on 1 now it's going to flip 1 1 and 1 1 will go to 1 0 and if you look at it this circuit would be exactly doing a similar thing so for example uh, let's say a 0 goes through here then this doesn't even act this control on z doesn't act so as long as 0 is going through this circuit this is nothing but two hadamards this doesn't act so in some sense you can see 0 0 will go to hadamard squared is identity so 0 0 will go to 0 0 nothing happens 0 1 will go to 0 1 and now if you have 1 going through the circuit now the circuit is going to be h z h and indeed you can verify 1 0 is going to yeah so now you can already see this is h z x which is nothing but controlled x so uh, for specifically one going through this this is nothing but this guy so 10 goes to 11 and 11 goes to 10 so a control on x is in fact a control on z times the hadamard operators uh, there are other ways to write so i'll rewrite this circuit again over here This was equal to this guy was equal to now the control Z can be flipped as we saw in the last lecture. Control Z is really can be regarded as you don't know which one is the it's perfectly symmetric the control z truth table you can as well write as the target is the upper qubit and the control is on the lower qubit this particular way and uh, indeed what you can do is again change it to this guy z as from the previous identity as x h h so i replace this control z by another operators h x x where the control is on the middle cube middle gate so in a way the control on the first qubit and the target being the second qubit was equivalent to a circuit with a bunch of Hadamard sandwiched where the target and the control interchange places and uh, I had the control on the down qubit and the target was the upper qubit. So these are just uh, circuit identities. The motivation again is going to be more clear uh, uh, a bit later on. Uh, there's a very interesting gate or a circuit. What does it do? You guys tell me. I have a state A and I have a state B. And uh, this is a control knot. I have another control knot. 
and I have another control node. What's going to be the output? So this particular structure is called as a particular gate, it's called the swap gate. What is, does it, it swaps qubit A and qubit B. Uh, of course, you can check it. Let A be alpha 1, 0 plus beta 1, 1. And uh, B is alpha 2, 0 plus beta 2, 1. Now, A tensor B is alpha 1, alpha 2. I'm just expanding them out. Alpha 1, beta 2 plus beta 1, alpha 2 plus beta 1, beta 2. And I apply a C naught, the first C naught gate, I apply this gate, uh, I get the state to be alpha 1, alpha 2, nothing happens to 0, 0 and 0, 1, but these guys are going to flip. So I'll have alpha 1, beta 2, 0, 1 plus beta 1, alpha 2, 1, 1, 1, 0 becomes 1, 1 plus beta 1, beta 2 is 1, 0. I again apply a C naught and I get alpha 1, alpha 2, 0, 0 plus alpha 1, beta 2. one one notice because now the control is on the second so this is c not one this is one this is two this is three so i am applying c not two here so i get uh, alpha one beta two plus beta one alpha two zero one plus beta one beta two one zero and then i again apply a c not the third c not finally and I get uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, 0, 0 plus alpha 1, beta 2, 1, 0 plus beta 1, alpha 2, 0, 1 plus beta 1, beta 2, 1, 1. Which when I factorize, this is alpha 1, 0 plus sorry alpha 2 0 plus beta 2 1 tensored alpha 1 0 plus beta 1 1 so in other words i see This was my qubit B and this is my qubit A. So A tensored B goes to B tensored A. So I have used the swap operator. Similarly, let's look at the what does the following circuit do? So this symbol means the control is on zero. And this symbol means the control is on 1. So I'll just write a control 
on 0 control on 1 so what does the circuit do so if 0 goes this guy gets activated and I apply a control knot or 1 goes through this guy remains as it is there is no control but this guy gets activated and I have a control so regardless of whatever is the state of the upper qubit I am applying a not gate on the down qubit so these two controls give rise to this sort of a circuit diagram similarly let's say I have a circuit where I have a control knot this is my circuit so what happens so notice the circuit is similar what it's going to do is that let's say 0 is going this is going to flip the 0 make it into 1 and then apply the control over here so in this sense I can take out this x here and then it becomes a control on 0 and a control on 1 as again you can draw the truth tables what happens to 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and verify these circuits but when I move this X gate through this control I get a control on 0 a control on 1 and this circuit reduces to an X gate on both the upper and the lower qubits so that's uh, the idea now let's say another circuit uh, this particular circuit now as we saw in the previous example over here we were able to use this guy using our previously known circuit identity this we already showed last time let's keep it as a side uh, this guy becomes just replacing this identity here over this guy I have a Z similarly I replace this this part and I get uh, this guy and now since the control for control Z doesn't matter on which qubit it is this guy is equivalent to uh, control Z over here you have H control Z X control Z H uh, which essentially what does this mean this means again if you look at the circuit this means regardless of this x operator flips the lower qubit so this basically means regardless whatever is the state on the down qubit the upper qubit in the state z 
and uh, the lower qubit is or in other words this guy so I have simplified this to this guy uh, similarly have a look at this particular circuit this if you try to see this is exactly equivalent to the following circuit you don't need to memorize these things it's just get a try to feel of it so for example if uh, you have uh, this sort of a circuit so what will happen if you take x through this circuit uh, you just have a sort of a feel of it what how how it's changing if I take x from here to here the control will shift on 0 and now the control is on 0 and 1 so regardless of anything it will be applying a not gate to the lower qubit so similarly this particular circuit you can check the truth table also this is going to be equals to a control of uh, minus identity and I'll have two not gates now this is control not and control not applying which is going to give me the identity uh, this circuit is going to simplify to what is a control application of a minus identity on the lower qubit it is nothing but if you look at it this guy this guy is nothing but a z operator uh, on the upper qubit so in other words my this particular circuit is going to turn out to be with two control not operators which is nothing but a z operator on upper and lower qubit so this is the way you uh, simplify a few circuit identities uh, and uh, simplify the algebra of your uh, calculations so with that we come to how do we represent measurements in a circuit So it's rather easy you have a state and you represent measurement by this thing now this is going to give you a classical result A that will be a classical bit corresponding to 0 or 1 with a probability this guy and you are going to recover where a can be either 0 or 1 the quantum state and this is going to be the classical result or the eigenvalue or whatever corresponding to a so that's how uh, a double line represents a classical value coming out of it so of course you can uh, what happens if you want to measure in some other basis so So you have a, a state, you make a measurement and observable O where O has a spectral decomposition 
this is the eigen value these are the eigen vectors so you are going to recover one eigen value lambda with the probability p lambda as previously this guy and you are going to recover the state lambda now if you need to change the basis then what happens so for example uh, you might consider another operator u o prime which is u o u dagger how are you going to measure o prime well one way is to do is to put that inside your measurement that's just going to be your u o u dagger that's going to yield you some value lambda of i and the final state you are going to get is this guy uh, or what you can do is the following you start with a particular state let's say you start with the well it's not going to be u of i over here is going to be u of lambda some some u of lambda of i that's basically you are going to measure so that's one way to do it how do you implement let's say you didn't have the facility of measuring in this change basis well what you can do is that you can apply this particular circuit you have a state psi uh, let's say your psi was given by some c lambda u lambda this is just a state preparation let's say this was your psi you put u dagger and then you measure o instead of u o u dagger uh, you get a particular outcome lambda with the probability c lambda square and then you again hit the state with a u and what you are going to recover is u lambda so essentially the state over here was sigma sum over c lambda u lambda you hit it with a u you are going to get the state over here to be c lambda lambda now you make your measurement and then you again hit your state after measurement that was the state and then you apply u you are going to get u lambda so it doesn't matter if you are measuring in a change basis or you are measuring in a particular basis a measurement observable o and putting the rotation gates outside to be acting on states or acting on an observable this is an exactly equivalent operation so that essentially is the idea uh that's what you are going to do so in other words this circuit is where you are measuring a particular observable o is equals to taking a state psi and measuring this particular operator again you will have a 
probability piece of lambda and uh, you will have the straight u lambda over here where u o u dagger is nothing but lambda so that's the idea yeah, so this is over here. so for example let's say you were supposed to measure the operator x and get an eigenvalue a that's equivalent to putting a u in that case it's going to be the hadamard matrix measuring the operator z getting the eigenvalue a and then reapplying the hadamard operator a and recovering h a so this is the way you can measure a uh, different observable x z by putting u's and u daggers in the circuit diagram itself so that's a uh, i would call this as trick to measure in another basis uh, that's the idea try to work out these bras and gets yourself and convince yourself that uh, this operation acting on a state indeed is equivalent to measuring another observable x where x and z are related by the hadamard matrices similarly so this was for x and z using hadamard matrices this is for an observable o and another observable obtained by uh, conjugating the initial observable by unitary matrices and how do i incorporate that in a circuit diagram okay so with that we come to the uh, last part which is also kind of a very nice a beautiful elegant way uh, it's called the principle of deferred measurement so what does it say i'll first draw the circuit diagram and two equivalent circuit diagrams and then i'll let you think about it so i have a measurement it gives me a classical value a and this is a classical control based upon that classical value a i apply a unitary use of a so that means if i get a will be 0 or 1 so if i a is 0 then nothing happens a is 1 then i apply this unitary operator and i get use of a psi and over here i get the ket a uh, i claim this circuit is equivalent to a controlled operation so notice this was a control over with double lines on a classical bit i had measured collapse the state and then the control was acting what i am now doing is a different thing this is a quantum control operation the control is on a quantum state and now i measure the upper qubit obtain a value a a classical value and a classical ket a and this is i claim u a a and uh, i claim these two circuits are equivalent what i have done is that uh, as the name suggests this is called principle of deferred measurement i'll have to check the spelling of uh, deferred but yeah whatever uh, basically what what has happened is that you have postponed the measurement you've taken this control operation u before the measurement over here and you have shifted the deferred the measurement to measuring finally and turns out that these two circuits are exactly equivalent to each other 
uh, the final state over here is going to be a tensor product of A and uh, UA psi and uh, yeah UA psi A let me put it that way and uh, similarly over here the final state is going to be final state of two qubits is going to be A tensor U A psi A over here. So that's the idea and you can see that you know I mean uh, let's say you started with a state here the following state this was a state and uh, ultimately what you get over here is uh, the final state as similarly here uh, if you can check the state over here is going to be Since you've already applied a controlled operation over here, you'll have this guy over here. Uh, and then after measurement, either you're going to collapse it to 0 or 1, the final state is exactly going to be where A stands for 0 or 1, tensored UA. A. That's going to be your final state. So A is 0 or 1 uh, as we have done, depending upon the measurement outcome. So this is called as the principle of deferred measurement. The idea is that you can either measure initially in the circuit and propagate the state, or you can take this control operation on a classical bit through the circuit to be a controlled operation on a quantum ket and postpone the actual measurement to a later state. And you can see that uh, through the circuit identity, this is going to yield the exact output state for the same input. Uh, okay, so that sort of completes our uh, basic review of the circuit diagrams. We'll see sort of applications of uh, these sort of uh, uh, circuit diagrams. I mean, of course, we've already seen that uh, uh, applications in, for example, quantum metrology, you can convert the whole quantum metrology to a circuit diagram using Hadamard for beam splitters, phase shifters, so on and so forth. You can also include measurements now. Uh, but yeah, so uh, in the next class, we'll do uh, some sort of a, we'll continue our studies on uh, uh, some notions of uh, density matrix entanglement and purification of quantum states. Thank you.